Welcome to this tutorial. In this video, we're going to be attempting a past paper from the year 2017, that is uh, for biology. So, uh, we proceed to our first question, which reads, choose the correct statement. Option 1 is saying, an atomic orbital can have a maximum of two shells. So, from our basic understanding in uh, chemistry as well as uh, molecular biology, we can disqualify this statement based on the fact that uh, shells are the ones that actually consist of orbitals and not the other way around. Then option two is saying an atomic shell can have a maximum of two atomic orbitals. So again, this is false because there are some shells that actually have more than two atomic orbitals. Option three is saying the second atomic shell can have a maximum of eight electrons. So this is actually true because when we look at uh, the second shell, it actually consists of uh, the 2s as well as uh, the 2p orbitals. So if you look at the 2s, the 2s uh, can actually contain uh, a maximum of two electrons then the 2p can actually contain a maximum of six electrons so altogether that uh, makes eight electrons then uh, based on that we can actually disqualify disqualify the rest of the options question two is saying the, choose the correct statement option one the first atomic orbital to be filled by electrons is the 1p. So um, this is false because uh, we, we actually only have the 1s orbital and not the 1p. We, we actually don't have the 1p uh, orbital. Then question, option 2 is saying the first three electrons in the p orbitals of the second shell will be unpaired. So this statement is actually true because when we look at uh, the p orbitals, so we're talking about the 2p. So the 2p uh, actually contains uh, three orbitals. That is the 2px, 2py, as well as uh, 2pz. So these orbitals actually have uh, the same energy level. And um, when filling electrons in these, we actually don't pair them. So if we had three electrons, they would be illustrated as follows. So we'll have that electron there with that spin, that electron with that spin, and that electron with that spin. Then if we had six electrons, we'd actually go further by filling uh, the three again so that the electrons are then paired but if we only have three remaining electrons that means that they will actually be unpaired and be distributed equally in the three orbitals so that means that our option two there is actually correct then statement three is saying the 1s atomic orbital can have a minimum of uh, two protons so the 1s atomic orbital can have a minimum of two protons. Then we have option four saying the function of neutrons is to neutralize electrons of the atom. And then we have option five saying the hydrogen atom has two electrons in its shell. So we can actually disqualify uh, these answers. Then question three is saying determine the maximum number of electrons in the second shell of an atom so for us to determine the maximum number of electrons uh, there's a simple formula that we can use and that formula is simply 2n uh, squared so our n there will be the number of shell so what shell number are we dealing with so we've been given to say the second shell so meaning that our n there will be two so that means we have our two there two there then uh, two squared is four then two times four is actually eight so meaning that uh, the second shell can actually hold a maximum number of eight electrons 
So we can move on to question number four. So we've, we've figured that our answer there for question three is actually four, which is eight. Okay, we can move on to question number four. So question four is saying, determine the number of valence electrons in an atom with an atomic number of 17. So we have atomic number 17. So our atomic number is 17. So what do we know about uh, valence electrons? So valence electrons will be the electrons in the outermost shell. So based on the 17 that we've been given, we can actually figure out a configuration uh, based on um, the number, the maximum number of electrons that can be filled in each shell. So we know that uh, the first shell can actually hold up to two electrons. The second shell can hold up to eight electrons. Uh, the third shell can hold up to eight electrons. So in our case, we have 17. So if we add this, that is 10. Already we've used up 10 electrons, meaning we're remaining with seven electrons. So in the third shell, that means we will have uh, seven electrons and that those are our valency electrons. So um, our answer based on that is actually uh, option five. Then we can move to question five, which reads, choose the correct statement. Question one, nitrogen gas contains two atoms linked together through a covalent double bond. So uh, when you look at nitrogen, nitrogen gas uh, definitely has uh, covalent bonds, but the covalent bonds that are contained in nitrogen gas are not double, but they are triple bonds. So the double bonds there disqualifies this answer. Option two is saying water contains one oxygen atom linked to two hydrogen atoms through hydrogen bonds. So again, when we look at this question, um, the question requires the type of intramolecular bond rather than the intermolecular bond. So when you look at water, water actually has covalent bonds rather than a water molecule. One water molecule will actually have um, covalent bonds rather than hydrogen bonds. So the intramolecular bonds found in water are actually covalent bonds. So meaning that that is wrong. Then option three is saying carbon dioxide has a carbon atom linked to two oxygen atoms through ionic bonds. That is false because carbon dioxide actually contains covalent bonds rather than ionic bonds. Option four is saying sodium chloride contains sodium linked to a chloride through an ionic bond. This is definitely true. The bond that is found in sodium chloride is actually ionic bond. Then uh, option five is saying a hydrogen bond can only be formed between two water molecules. So this is false because um, they're saying that a hydrogen bond can actually be formed between two water molecules only. So when you look at water, one water molecule can actually be bonded to four other water molecules. And here they've specified to say that it can only occur between two water molecules. So meaning that that is actually false there. Then we can move to question six. So question six is saying a double covalent bond refers to sharing of dash electrons. So we have a double covalent bond. So this double covalent bond will exist between atom A and atom B. So this uh, bond is actually about sharing of electrons since it is a covalent bond. So what happens is that this atom there actually has its electron on that side. It has its electrons on that side, which are one and two. This atom as well will actually have its own electrons on that side. So that means we have one, two, three, and four electrons being shared. So our option there that will be correct will be four, which is four. So having said that, we can actually move on to question number seven. 
So question 7 is saying, in a water molecule, the non-bonding electrons in oxygen is or are. So we have our water molecule there, be having oxygen being bonded to hydrogen. So what do we know about these two atoms, the hydrogen as well as the oxygen? So um, oxygen actually has a, a valence, valency of 6. Then we have hydrogen there having a valency of 1. So if these are covalent bonds, it means that oxygen there is actually sharing one of its electrons and hydrogen there will be sharing one of its electrons uh, same applies to the other bond so meaning that we have two electrons of oxygen being used up and we know very well that it actually has a valency of six so meaning that we have four more electrons that are unpaired so these are the four electrons that are unpaired. They will be there and uh, all the, the electrons of hydrogen will actually be used up in this bond. So if this is the case, it means that we have four unbonded electrons. So the non-bonding electrons in this case will be four, which is option four. Uh, question eight reads, which of the following statements describe a covalent bond between carbon and oxygen? So they are looking for a description for uh, the covalent bond between carbon and oxygen. So carbon and oxygen, we have our carbon there, we have our oxygen. So they want to find out what exists, what type of covalent bond is this? So option one is saying, the electrons are shared equally between carbon and oxygen atoms. This is false because when we look at this bond, actually, oxygen is more electronegative than uh, carbon. That means that it will actually draw electrons closer to its nuclei than carbon. So that disqualifies option one. Then uh, option two is saying electrons in the bond are closer to carbon molecule nucleus. So that is wrong again because carbon is actually less electronegative compared to oxygen. Uh, option three is saying each atom in the molecule keeps its electrons. Again, that is false. Option four is saying electrons in the bond are closer to the oxygen nucleus, which is true. As I explained, oxygen is more electronegative, so it will pull electrons to its nucleus. Then uh, option five is saying the electrons in the molecule are evenly distributed. No, they are not evenly distributed. So that's it for question eight. We can move to question nine. So question nine is saying identify the correct description of a hydrogen bond. So option one, uh, a bond between oxygen and hydrogen atoms of the same water molecule. Again here, they're describing uh, intramolecular bonds. And we know that the bonds that are found uh, in water, the intramolecular bonds found in water is actually covalent and not hydrogen bonds. Then option two is saying a bond between oxygen of water and nitrogen of another molecule like ammonia. This is actually very true because remember a hydrogen bond can actually exist between hydrogen and uh, three, three more atoms that is nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. So a hydrogen bond can exist between hydrogen and nitrogen or hydrogen and oxygen or hydrogen and fluorine. So if we have a nitrogenous uh, molecule, we have a nitrogen in ammonia, for example, and we ac actually have, um, if we actually have uh, oxygen uh, in nitrogen, we know that um, in ammonia, sorry, we know that there's existence of uh, this. So meaning that uh, our water there will actually form a bond. The molecules of water can actually form a bond with either of these. Then we have three saying a bond between oxygen and hydrogen of different water molecules. Yes, that is very true. 
then uh, option four is saying a bond between two hydrogen atoms of different molecules so the correct answers should be three and two above so we can move on to question number 10 so question 10 is saying choose the correct statement which distinguishes water from ice option one is saying in liquid water each molecule is surrounded by four other molecules so this is actually the same for both ice and uh, liquid water except that the bonds are more extended in ice and uh, liquid water will actually have compacted bonds then option two is saying in liquid water molecules are more densely packed in liquid water molecules are more densely packed this is actually very true because of this uh, dense dense package uh, water actually uh, ice can actually float on uh, liquid water then option three is saying in liquid water the molecules are arranged in a regular pattern and then four is saying and in ice the hydrogen bonds between molecules constantly make and break this is force this is force and uh, this is force as well so leaving us with option 10 which is saying in liquid water molecules are more densely packed so this feature actually attributes to the reason why ice is able to float on liquid water